Welcome to Fading Memories, a supportive podcast for those of us caring for a loved one with memory loss. With me today on the podcast is Dr. Patricia Ballone. She is a certified functional medicine practitioner, coach, chiropractor, speaker, and author. She has helped thousands over the last 35 plus years stop adapting their lifestyles to pain and chronic problems by focusing on the whole person. The result is that her clients and patients find out why and the cause of their problems and identify the starting point. What, why, where, and how to begin their health journey to live longer, better, and healthier. Dr. Ballone is the founder and principal of Ask Dr. Pat, the health team network, a company dedicated to skyrocketing your health, lifestyle, and mindset with strategies and programs that make sense and help you age gracefully, think, move, and feel better, and live longer and happier. So thank you for joining us, Dr. Pat. Thank you. I appreciate being here. That's a mouthful, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I did that as a cold read, too, so I did good. <laughs> I am happy. That's just like you did a great job. So you have a book called Why Are You Sick or Fat, Sick, and Tired, right? Sick, Fat, and Tired. Sick, Fat, and Tired. I did have it, and then I switched it. So why are we sick, fat, and tired? Well, you know, it might go back to like, you know, why I wrote the book and why I picked that title. And um, the book is a guidebook, you know, just to give some background on the book. It's a guidebook that helps people focus on where to start your health journey. And it does that by finding your weakest link. If your weakest link is festered or fed, so to speak, it only perpetuates itself and usually becomes more of a problem and it affects your immune system. And this day and time with the COVID uh, virus, the coronavirus, it's really important to find out what's blowing your immune system out. And so you've got to go back to like what's going on in the whole organ system. And the whole organ system is, is like a Swiss watch. And so the brain controls and coordinates all functions and you have all these other organ systems. And so you've got to find the one that is like, is like what's, what's making the Swiss watch start to lose time. And so if you can go in and find out what that weakest link is, you can tonify and you can fortify that weakest link so that it can be better and you can improve so you can have more stable health and more stable aging. Makes sense, right? Oh, totally. Yep. And, and I've so, started, oops, sorry, I've started reading the book, and so far I'm on the right track, listeners. Good. That's awesome. You said <laughs> that you had- I'll be around for a long time. <laughs> but I want to see, it's not an individual score, it's how the whole piece, all the piece of the puzzle comes together, because it's part of this, this watch doesn't keep time, it's how they all interact with each other. So that's what's important for me to see, is to see someone's pattern. Because you can have a high score in one area and have a low score in the other area, and you're going, well, why is that? So you've got to see what else is, you know, what's contributing to all the pieces of the puzzle. So I you have know, to keep and, reading. <laughs> <laughs> you have to keep reading. And, you know, a lot of people always, you know, ask me, like, well, what can you do for, uh, like, myofibralgia? What can you do for, like, dementia? What can you do for, you know, like, for my, like, chronic diabetes? And they all have one thing in common. In 1984, Time Magazine put out an article that said, the front of it said, um, if I can remember it correctly, inflammation. You know, they finally found, Western medicine finally found the connection between Western medicine. It was February 23rd, 2004. I always remember numbers really well. The exact title, iffy. But that magazine article tied in inflammation to all these chronic illnesses and diseases. So the thing is, we're now 2020, and they still haven't done anything about finding the root cause of inflammation. That's interesting. Else, we were just talking about inflammation because my husband, uh, we, just, we just got back from our chiropractor this morning, and his, I guess it's his right thumb, yeah, and he's left-handed. He's like, I don't know if I did something to it or if it's arthritis or what. And the chiropractor basically, uh, he adjusted his, the joints in his hand, and now his thumb feels a lot better. But he, they were discussing the difference between degenerative arthritis, osteoarthritis, osteoarthritis, I got it, 
and rheumatoid arthritis. And when I got in the car, I said, you know how you avoid some of the rheumatoid arthritis? To go on an anti-inflammatory diet. He goes, I know, I know. That means eating less meat and less dairy and all that. I'm like, oh, you do pay attention to me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. That's a good thing to pay attention to. And also that point brings up a very interesting aspect because you asked me a question about why do people get sick? Why do people get sick, fat, and tired? Um, and it's three things only. It's really simple. Trauma, which is biomechanics of the spine, which is why the chiropractor adjusted the thumb because they wanted to make sure there wasn't any other thing contributing to that pain. And then there is toxins, the air that we breathe, the water we drink, um, your emotional environment, your living environment. Look at how all of us are housebound, basically. <laughs> you know, um, in the last few weeks because of a virus. Um, and, you know, and then you also have your thoughts and thoughts can kill you. Thoughts are, can undo a diet and the exercise or the, the adjustments that you get from a chiropractor, because that's why you go fun structures function, um, is so that you don't have the inflammation in your joints or your back and you don't, and it helps you with the toxin part of it, eating a really good diet, which is the anti-inflammatory diet. You know, and knowing how to put those foods together, like in a food combining chart, is somewhat helpful. Um, but you've got to know what foods really, when you're looking at one of those charts, you've got to know what foods you want to eat or what you like to eat and how they best fit together. Because it isn't like you can't eat them. you just got to eat them with correctly postured with each other. You know, and thoughts are a big thing. If you don't get a handle on your thoughts, you know, they can undo anything that those first two correct. I can and totally see that because so, I think you know, we, my mom was in the hospital a couple weeks ago. She broke her fell, broke her leg. And as you know, somebody with advanced Alzheimer's, that's double nightmare. And then this was right at the time when all the virus stuff started really rearing its ugly head in California and the United States. So it was very stressful and trying to make decisions for her. You know, it's like, I'm trying to make decisions for your, your life and you can't even, you don't even know your leg is broken. So it's just, I was really stressed out and I had a recent guest that basically taught me a little bit about mindfulness that actually worked for me. So, mm -hmm. and I've mentioned this a couple times lately. I was walking across the, from the kitchen across the, you know, room and just mentally spinning into a very bad place and i stopped and i said hello anger why are you angry and i thought about it for a second and i was like oh it's just because i want i want to do the best i can for my mom and i went from a person that was probably gonna have a fight with the husband which would have been even more of a problem to somebody who's like oh i'm actually doing a good thing okay and i actually felt really good about myself and that Time frame was about 30 seconds from mm -hmm. I could just feel the tornado just whipping up mentally. And I mean, I could feel it physically. And it was just like, Bleh! and I said, nope, what, why are we feeling this way? Anger, being angry isn't going to solve anything. Okay. Oh, I get it. Oh, oh, I'm a good person. You know, it was just like amazing. And so I've been telling, like, I have a friend, we just um, Zoom socialized with our past neighbors are really good friends last night and she's very stressed out. And I said, you know, it's okay to feel that way. Just, I said, don't try to squash it down and say, you know, I can't, I can't fix this. I can't fix that. I, just, I shouldn't be stressed out because I can't, you know, just stop it. I said, just feel yeah. that way and ask yourself, why do you feel that way? Because what she's concerned about is extremely important. But she can't do anything well, it, about it, it now. It is, but there's you really have to ask yourself a couple questions. So when crap hits the fan, it doesn't matter what <laughs> what business you're in, it doesn't matter what part of your life you're in, physically, emotionally, spiritually, it doesn't matter. What matters is for you to stop and tell yourself, stop, get a grip, because it doesn't worry doesn't solve anything. Mm -mm. Being anxious doesn't solve anything. Being proactive solves things. So you ask yourself, is there anything I can do about how I'm feeling right now? If the answer is yes, get up and do it. 
it will save your life. If you don't, if you, this, if you can't do it, then turn on binaural beats, turn on a meditation, go hug a tree, <laughs> you know, go, go do something that's bigger than what you're doing. Go out and like, you know, like play with kids, look at something. Um, I used to tell my staff to do this is when they were whipped up about something and then I'm treating patients, go outside and take a couple minute break and focus on something that's beautiful mm -hmm. and be grateful, you know, and, and just, and then come back in and do your job. You know, it's just the, it, and even with, um, you know, where, where people are at today in that level of stress, you're seeing, the first thing is like, don't watch the news too much. Give yourself a thir like 30 minute time span because they're not gonna change the news in so many minutes after that. I mean, that's like, you, you need to know um, what you need to know for the whole day, basically in 30 minutes or less. And then you have to, you know, because that's the mental part. So the, the five aspects of health is diet, exercise, sleep, uh, properly mental attitude, that kind of thing, and properly functioning nervous system. So knowing what to eat is really important. If you really want to be healthy, so you don't stress out, so you don't have anxiety, so you don't sit, sit there and you're projecting. Women have, are so good at projecting, it's amazing to me. It's just like you can't, it's just like if there's not something that you can do about your life now, it's just like the first thing that you can do is you can take control of your thoughts. That is true. You know? And that and that simple question is like, is there something I can do about it? Yes. Great. Do it. If there's not something you can do about it, go go do something else. Be nice to somebody. Call your best friend up and tell her that you love her and miss her. I mean, it's so much better to spread that love and care than it is to focus on what's not working. Because it just makes whatever you focus on, you just attract more of. That's true. Right? I've I've noticed since being a much bigger part of my mom's care i think i i don't want to say i have a better under i guess i have a better understanding of our senior citizens mm -hmm. and i smile at people a lot more i used to just observe because i'm also a photographer so i'd be like "Ooh, i like a woman's hair and everything i like her outfit man she's really pretty and then i'd think about like how i would photograph her and i'm sure people thought it was weird now I just smile at them and then I can still think of those thoughts and I don't look like a weirdo. But when you smile at somebody, you know, especially if they see you looking at them, they're like, whoa, why is she looking at me? And then you smile at them, they're like, oh, okay. And you almost can't not smile back. You gotta be a pretty, pretty dark person not to smile back. You might not even want to smile back, but you just do. And well, the people other sometimes are in their own world though too, but it, that's it's like true. when something that might, um, and they might be like working through something that's making them stay in linear time as opposed to exponential time where you're not stressed out and you can get everything done and be who your best person is. It's called Einstein time. And, you know, so when somebody's going forward, I, you can, it, and people should practice this, maybe this is a nice little hack, is to practice smiling when you're on the telephone. Mm -hmm. Because that smile goes right through. It means a lot to people. You know, so if you start thinking like, if it means a lot to me, it might mean a lot to somebody else who's the recipient of that. You know, and having a little humor. I mean, you know, we're all, you know, so we're all going in this boat allegedly in the same way. Why is somebody rowing in the opposite direction? I don't understand. You know, it, it's important. Your, your tip about smiling when you're on the phone, I learned that, I swear, it was 32 years ago. I didn't work corporate world for very long because it doesn't, um, I don't play well with others, <laughs> so, essentially. And I was, this was when I was first out of college and I was a receptionist at a, um, like a commercial appraisal company. And I really admired one of the sales guys who was, about let me think i was 23 so he's like about five years older than i was and in my world you know he had, he was really making it you know by the time he was 30 and he was going to be there and i listened to all that 80s bs because i graduated from high school in 84 so you were talking about the time magazine from 1984 so you know i was like i was buying into the nonsense that you had to make it by the time you were 30. i don't believe that nonsense anymore and one day he called me up and he goes what is matter with you and i'm like what? What are you talking about? I was like literally shocked. He was, you sound like you're having the worst day. And I thought, 
Well, I wasn't. And I don't remember if it was him, but somebody in that time frame said, you know, before you answer the phone, take a deep breath and smile. And that comes through. And I never had anybody comment like that again. So I've learned that a long time ago. And then for people who don't watch these podcasts on YouTube, I sit here and smile and nod a lot because if I don't smile at the person I'm talking to, I look like I don't like them. So <laughs> I can I mean, watch I how a, I that, look that, while that I'm talking grumpy to woman, you. That grumpy woman face. <laughs> I did right. a behind the scenes quickie video one day for my photography business. I swear I had the worst resting bitch face and it was just me. I was just setting up some stuff. I was demonstrating. There was no dialogue. I deleted it because I'm like, holy Toledo, I look like a horrible person. <laughs> yeah, I always say that my dog, you know, um, you know, my dog takes better pictures than I do. <laughs> well, I have golden really retrievers, so. <laughs> they always take better pictures. Yeah, they're, they're, they're great. <laughs> you know? So, but yeah, you know, smiling is good. It helps your mental is, attitude. Smile is good. Something else that, you know, being hydrated is a really important thing. I talk about it all the time. I like, almost like I, you know, like, and I have my bottle of water here that I'm doing too. Mine the, matches my outfit. But, <laughs> <laughs> mine doesn't. Um, but the, um, you know, like how people figure out how much water they should have is based upon their body weight. So if you weigh 140 pounds, then you should be drinking 70 ounces of water. What's the best thing to put in your water? Because you want to alkalize your body. So the way to do that is either put lemon juice. So, and it's so that the water starts to get cloudy. You know, and if you're starting to get um, sick, like you're getting a cold, you know, then you want to put, buy a larger bottle of water and put as much lemon juice in it as possible um, or put vinegar in it. And, you know, you can do a shot of vinegar because you want to all, you, you want to get your body alkalized. And the theory has been that at 7.2, pH, you can't get sick. So mm. when you're looking at about hacks of how to improve your immune system, that's one thing. And the reason why that works is because when you drink water with lemon or vinegar in it, it increases the acid in your stomach. So you actually digest your food properly. So by the time that the food leaves the stomach and goes into your intestinal tract, which is where the small intestine, which is where most of it is, is absorbed for the nutrients then you have a better possibility of actually absorbing those nutrients so you're not missing out anything. If you eat food and you don't digest it, it putrefies in your intestinal tract. So that's where people have more gas, you know, and that type of thing. Like in lay one of those bombs, you know, yeah. that you're going like, oh my God, you know. <laughs> I'm laughing and, because the girl dog did that the other day. I was like, whoa, what did you eat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Here's my ask. problem. I cannot stand water with lemon in it. Cannot okay, so there's there's so um, what kind of liquid do you I like? drink just like this plain water? It's filtered, you know, reverse osmosis, filtered water, and black tea. That's all I drink. Okay, so you got to get the acid in there in order to do that. So you're going to like you know if you can, get, can you take lemon juice by itself? Can Maybe. I add sugar to it and make it lemonade? No, if you add sugar to it, sugar is one of the biggest um, sins that people can do. Um, and because that creates a lot of inflammation in the body. That is very true. And, and so if you want to really up your game to have better brain function and better body function, sugar is not the thing to add in your diet. It slows figure. your digestion down. And hmm. does a lot of other things. We won't. The list is way long on sugar. Yeah, but, that I've done a lot of. I've talked to a lot of people about the evils of sugar, which is hard because that's my one biggest downfall. But I have greatly improved that in the last decade. So is well, it, the, the pH waters that people buy? I have never even tasted those. Do those the ones that? Well, are, you can make it more alkaline just by putting lemon or putting um, vinegar in it. Or some people, my grandmother used to have um, a cup of tea, which she called her tea in the morning, which was hot water and a tablespoon of um, cider vinegar every morning. And so, but it's, it's good for you. You turn your nose up to it. I see you react. Because I know like I won't like it. <laughs> well, you know, it's I'll just like, it. but you got to like, look at like, what, what results do you want to get? 
And what are you willing to do to get those results? So I'm just wondering what just results like, I would get because I, and I think we talked about this in our get, when we were doing our get to know you call, it's like I lost a hundred pounds. I totally changed my, I went from very little to no exercise to six days a week. So I like, I did a 180 on all that stuff. And I feel like I have better mental clarity and, and I'm working on the thoughts, learning that one now. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm four for five, I think, cause I sleep really well, eat well, exercise. I'm missing one. So let me ask you a question. Let okay. me ask you a question. Um, out of the five pillars of health, diet, exercise, proper sleep, proper, you know, like uh, mental attitude and properly functioning nervous system, which is biomechanics, chiropractic, which one do you think you're the weakest on? Probably the thoughts. Okay. So let's talk about thoughts. Okay. You know, and you know, cause I, th I think that the, um, you know, th there's a, a hormone in women called oxytocin, right? Something mm -hmm. like that. It's like, and it's the bonding. It's like when you have a baby and you know, it's just like, and it comes out, there's immediate bonding. Women bond, they use that hormone, that hormone surges when they find the man of their dreams, whether it's the right one or the wrong one. <laughs> and, and sometimes it's just like, you don't want that bonding hormone to happen with people who aren't good for you and you do it too soon. So, but it happens. And women always want to have, like, you know, if you ask like women and men who takes care of health and uh, organizes it in the household, it's the woman, it's not the guy, generally speaking. That is true. And so women have this, you know, their best bet and little health hack is that cocoa butter, or like massage in around the shoulders, or on your feet increases that happy hormone for women. So it makes so it makes it so like if you're having a stressful day, cocoa butter might be your new best friend. Well, it's interesting because that's what I use as a moisturizer. Uh -huh. So if I'm getting stressed out, I will just add some more to my neck because it's not going to hurt right. my skin. Well, also you can smell it too. You know, so the um, the the point of that is is that. When you get stressed, a lot of people never know what to do about stress and because we've always been told that we aren't supposed to have any stress symptoms. I mean, like fear, anger, worry, you know, what's going on with work? What did they say? You know, because women ruminate all the time. And the more you ruminate, the more you have issues. And in Chinese medicine and kinesiology, that worrying goes back to dealing with the spleen. The spleen makes red blood cells and you have to have the red blood cells in order to be really healthy you know because the, the, the spleen goes basically um sends that blood up to the lungs so the lungs can make it can oxygenate it then it goes to the heart and it's pumped and a lot of blood in the body is stored in the liver you know mm -hmm. as generally speaking and women lose that amount of blood every month with their menstrual cycles so it's like this, you know, it's just like you got like, how do I replenish that? And one way to replenish that is, you know, is like to eat well, cut out sugar, you know, I mean, it's just like, it's not really that hard, but you'll find out how much you're attached to it, depending upon how old you are. And if your mother used that as a pacifier for you when you're growing up, because you've got to take a, you got to take a look at a mindset for around any type of change that you want to have, you know, and if you're trying to do things that are like in preventative medicine, like I don't want chronic illness and disease. Well, the one thing that, you know, heart disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's, um, and like uh, hypertension, any chronic illness, disease, they have that one thing in common is inflammation. So being on an anti-inflammatory diet, drinking the water with lemon, you know, and my basic diet that I think is anti-inflammatory depending upon your food choices. I always, at this point in time when my mother was growing up, everything was organic. Now you've got to buy organic and pay a lot of money for it. And, you know, but you got it like, you know, Mediterranean diet for me is, is the, is the diet of choice. And it's, you know, it's easy. It doesn't take, you know, any extra brain power to like really figure it out after you get the basics of it and you can move forward. But eating is really important. 
exercise. If you're not moving, you're going to die. My second patient I ever had was a 92 year old woman and she wanted to just finish her, you know, her little crocheting that she did because they're having a new one come in the family. Mm -hmm. And so she was having some neck pain and um, she would do, get her exercise by taking her Dixie cup and going out in the yard and watering her 150 plants. I went 150 times, that's three times. He goes, well, she goes to the neighborhood with her beautiful Southern Atlanta accent. Well, the neighborhood's going kind of downhill, Dr. Pat. <laughs> you know, so she just stayed in her own environment. And so she was 92 years old. I figured she was doing something right. And maybe that word of wisdom was something I could pass on to people. And she was lovely. And so then you go into sleep. A lot of people don't sleep well. So a, hack I, so a hack I can do on sleep, because sleep can make you either look old or young. You want to do something anti-aging, get sleep. And, and be careful about what you put on your skin, because 65% of whatever you put on your skin gets absorbed in your body. Yeah, it's all, and so, it's all and if good it's, stuff. And if it's toxic, not just you, but if it's, if it's toxic, you know, for your listeners, if it's toxic, then it's got to go through the liver. And when the liver can't process toxins, the problem is it doesn't, and it gets overwhelmed. It stores them in blood. It stores them in fat. It stores them in bone, and it stores them in brain. So you want a liver that's really doing a good job at detoxification and not being overstressed. So what you eat and what you drink and what you think are so important to that, you know, to all those organ systems, but especially that the liver, which does that really important job, and sleeping. For some people, they need eight hours. Other people could get by on six, and they function perfectly fine. So if you're going and you're thinking about sleep and you're having a hard time going to sleep, my favorite health hack is I listen to um, binaural beats. You know, And I look at ones that are for theta. Theta is your dream cycle. Because if you don't get into that dream cycle and you stay there for a certain period of time, then you wake up exhausted even if you slept eight hours. People always have that experience like, oh, my God, I got eight hours sleep last night. I feel like crap. You know, So it's because they never got in that and they were, they were like floating too much. You know? And then back to the thought process of positive mental attitude – you know, figure out how to look at a, at a glass full, you know, figure out how to like, you know, like, okay, so I get to stay home now. I've always wanted to like do this project. I always wanted to write a book. I always wanted to just write and see if I'm good at blah, blah, blah. I wanted to sing. There's th tons of things you can do online in this day and time, you know, and not be scared. If you're scared, it's like, if you're scared, just say it. I'm scared. Get over, get, you know, like I'm scared. What can I do? Can I do something about it? Can't move on, you know, because you can't do, there's just some things that are out of your control. And if it's out of your control, you need to really center yourself. So meditation is a really good way to do that, you know, and, you know, and then if it, like, you know, there's always naysayers out there. So if somebody just starts saying something negative or it's like, you feel like all of a sudden you feel like someone's putting their energy on you. You just call, look at them and you go like this. I'm going to give you a, a, a position is a little bit more like this what I learned to do is just say like thanks for sharing that with me then you can see I'm pushing that energy like right back not meant to you specifically but you know and just and smile because it's just like there's nothing can touch you if, when you have peace of mind I want everyone to have peace of mind when you have peace of mind other things just function and work for you you know and then see a chiropractor you know, find a good chiropractor so that they can get things aligned so you have a better opportunity for the brain to coordinate and control all functions with the rest of the body through the spinal cord. You know, and move. You know, if people don't like to exercise, go out and walk. You can still walk. It's not, it's not a crime to walk. Um, and so, like, go out and walk. You know, and, you know, go just go find, you know, I take my dog for a walk and people are, like, actually are walking semi up to me <laughs> and I'm going, hi, you know, I'm thinking about the, the, dis the distancing, but you know, when you look in a hospital that has like the sterile ward thing, but germs on one side don't know the difference from the other side and germs are everywhere. We need germs mm -hmm. so that we can maintain life. You know, this strain of this virus that's going around is definitely a brand new strain. 
that people don't have the immunity for. So, of course, if they have, you know, altered health care, like they have autoimmune diseases and things like that, and it, or they have chronic illness and disease of some sort, diabetes, heart disease, they're more prone to get that. And if you think of this statistic, one in every three persons in this country has heart disease. That's, that's huge. That's horrible. I, did, I have not heard that statistic. You know, it's like six out of nine, um, you know, when you look at pre-diabetes, the pre-diabetes, uh, the statistic is very similar to that. But you have people who are pre-diabetic and don't even know it. There's a lot of people who don't have the best health possible. So it's important to look at where your immune system is functioning and not functioning, you know, and then figure out how to, like, what, what can I do about that to go to the next step? So I can prevent, you know, avoid or diminish the expression of the gene pool that I inherited from my parents. Because everyone's scared about that, you know, whether, especially like with Alzheimer's, right? It's, just, it's a big thing. So you've got to go back in and take a look at that. That's why my book that I wrote um, called Why Are You So Fat and Tired? Um, addresses that because it shows you where that link that link is tom o'brien who wrote a endorsement on it says something very valuable and he says why what is it in my lifestyle in the environment has caused the problem he said it doesn't matter what the symptom or pattern is or the diagnosis that you've been given the question is and i'm going to repeat again why what is it in my lifestyle diet and environment that has caused the problem and because you've got to look at your participant, like how participatory you have been and like where you're at. But you can change. There's always something you can do. You well, know? I think and everybody's always... going to find out real fast that the lifestyle we've been leading has been very unhealthy. You know, I live way out in the suburbs. It probably takes a good two hours to commute to San Francisco. Don't even try to get from here to Silicon Valley if you want to have any kind of life. But people move out here because you can get bigger homes and there's good schools and it's good for the family and blah, blah, blah. And now they're home, working from home at, from companies that are like, no, 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 that'll never work. Now they've had to make it work. And I'm pretty sure, and I'm hoping that I'm right, that we're at the very beginning of a cultural shift that was like basically kicked into high gear with this virus. Because, you know, if you can work from home, even if it's half of the time and you're not commuting, it's better for our environment, which is better for us. You know, you, you will have time to go for a walk maybe in the morning and maybe you won't be so exhausted in the evening. You can take the kids and the dogs for a walk, at, you know, twice a day. God forbid. that would Because be you're not breathing all that carbon monoxide. Well, and, and you're not spending three and four hours in a car or on the train or whatever getting from point A to point B. Well, that's an environmental toxin, either mm -hmm. the noise, the, uh, the exhaust fumes, the car. Just think about the less carbon. Did you see that picture? Um, someone, I was on a business call the other day, and this woman showed a picture of, um, might have been Wuhan. It mm -hmm. was in Wuhan. And from nobody driving, I mean, it showed the carbon emission, like the Glob from outer space, you know, was like over. And then, like two weeks later, when no one was driving, it was clear skies. Mm -hmm. Same you know, thing so is happening in LA. And then the yeah. canals in Venice have Are, cleared they up. They have dolphins. They have dolphins in them now. Isn't that cool? Oh, I didn't know that. But I always thought the canals in Venice were lakey, greenish, lake colored. I thought that was normal. Oh, they are. They but are. they're not. They're clear <laughs> now. And it's like, okay, people. You know, the world has given us a humongous slap across the face, like, maybe maybe several, to say, look, this is what we need to do to heal you and heal the planet. And it's interesting. We've had some philosophical well, discussions in this house about this. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's true, though, because, like, you know, Mother, I mean, look at the things that have happened, the tsunamis, the volcanoes, um, the um, other, like, portion of it that you know the people like the carbon emissions the you know the climate change you know it's just like you know hey i'm going to give you one more chance you know learn how to do this now and and cause it's hard to figure out i mean there's you know in the united states for instance the train system in europe is huge 
And people can go almost anywhere on a dime someplace. United States, you've got to get in a car in mm -hmm. order to go, you know, to go to the grocery store unless you live in a very populated area. And right now, nobody wants to be in a very populated area in the United States um, because of, you know, like the level of contagiousness. But if you have a good, strong immune system, the likelihood of you getting something is minimized drastically. I so I have that. another health hack. I have okay, another health hack perfect. that I think is important. Um, when um, I was in Chicago, I think I told you this the other day, but when I, when I was in Chicago, I met a woman who had this like crazy schedule and did two events, one in Chicago, Colorado, then when I came back, went on vacation, um, to got Cancun, went to San Diego, came back, and then I met her the next day, and she couldn't understand why she was getting the cold. You know, and this is when they first announced the uh, coronavirus thing. And then she was concerned that she might have that, and what would I do? And I was, you know, we were talking about that, and I was helping her with some, um, some techniques that I know, um, but she already had it where it was already, it was already interior by the time when I saw her that night for dinner. And I just advised her not to eat heavy because you got to give your intestinal tract an opportunity to heal and get rid of the stuff that's there. And the way to purge that is to, or help it purge with, in a nice way. One way is to make miso soup. And, mm. and it's just like, and from being the old hippie that I am, um, you know, it's just like you boil the water, you never boil it again. You bring it down to a simmer, you add the miso in, and you put in whatever vegetable your heart desires. And then you take it when it's the vegetables are tender, you take it and put it in a blender and you hit the and you pulverize it. And then you put a little sour cream, you put a little oil in it. And that's what you take while you're in that position. And what it does is it increases the surface density of the vegetables so you get better access to micronutrients that you need which is really good for you and you sleep and you drink water with lemon to flush your system out you know you've had too much water and lemon that you can breathe it i've done this before where i've had i used to get colds for three weeks and i would take water one of my teachers made me do this one time because i'm sick and tired of seeing you sick and tired for three weeks when you get a cold so let's do this thing just just do it once pat and i did it and it worked it was really great. You put in water, put in that lemon, and that's all I drank. And I started to smell the lemon when I was breathing. And I was going, like, wow, I thought it was just so weird to me. And I knew that I had, I had my lemon on water and lemon. And the other thing, when I was in Chicago and I started feeling achy and I was getting those typical signs that you're getting sick, you know, achy, back in my stomach, my stomach, you know, stuff that tasted normal to me that day didn't taste normal to me. So I left my meetings early. I had to drive from Chicago to uh, Detroit the next morning. And so I didn't bring anything with me. I usually bring my some essential oil. I bring a Chinese remedy called Yin Chao Sun. And because um, I'm a Chinese physician too. So I have those kind of things. I have my uh, cold laser with me and things like that. And um, so. I found um, activated charcoal from coconut in my mm. bag of tricks that I had with me. And so I, when I got back, um, I took one um, every two hours until nine o'clock, from three o'clock to nine o'clock. And then I took a hot bath. And when I took the coconut, I did tapping. So a lot of people are familiar with tapping. So your immune system for the, in the adult is right here. Oops, sorry. Um, right at this point here, right below, if you take your finger to the base of your neck, mm -hmm. so like there's right a notch there. And that's the manibrium, right behind the manibrium and where the sternum meet is basically where the thymus is. So in tapping, I tap 30 times here and I tap 30 times simultaneously at the belly button. You know, and so it's, it's, a, it's a technique. And so then, you know, what I did is I went to sleep. I took a hot bath. You know, hot shower. And because I started with a hot shower, I just, I, I need to get in water and just sit in it. And got out, uh, went to sleep. I got up, I was 85% better. I had maybe just side effects. And of course, when you take that kind of charcoal, what charcoal does is it's like flypaper. 
<laughs> and the flies come running. So you pick the, that you put the charcoal in your intestinal tract, and all the bad stuff connects to it that's in the intestinal tract, and it pulls it out of your system. So you make you have more bowel movements the next day, but it shouldn't make you have diarrhea. You know, so just doing a cycle like like three, five, seven, nine, like four of them before I went to sleep. And then after, when I got up, I took another one. And in my five-hour drive, you know, by the time I got to Detroit, I was 150%. I was psyched. I was ready to go. Um, and so it's just, it's a simple health hack. A lot of people take activated charcoal, but they don't take it in that sequencing when they start to not feel well. So it's a, you know, and, and for instance, if I wasn't, better the next morning I would say that whatever I had would have been more interior and I needed to do something more a little bit I had to up my game on that but it was it was such a great you know when that first feeling came on I'm thinking and not having anything with me I was psyched when I got up the next morning I was like yes you know got a win on this one but that's Always a great that's a, a good health hack we we actually had to give our youngest dog activated charcoal he ate something we never did figure out what it was but it was he ate something so toxic it caused um ner like neurodegenerative mm -hmm. issues i mean he couldn't walk i mean he's mm -hmm. like his head was twisted around like his muzzle was pointed at his tail it was like it was right before halloween and i was like why are you why are you demonstrating exorcist <laughs> tendencies <laughs> well, it was terrible the other th remedy for dogs that work, because I work a lot with pets also, you know, and with some lifestyle um, fixes for people that are friends of mine, is Thulia odensialis. And Thulia odensialis is a homeopathic remedy that I have for my dog's 14 and a half. And yesterday he had like a, he ran through the whole backyard in the front yard and he came back and did this hucklebuck thing where they do turn around. And then he's gone, all right, let's play, you know? And I was just thinking, wow. But he gets, before I give him anything that may have the possibility of being toxic, I always give him Thulia odensialis. And it's actually, they use it sometimes for wart removal, but it's also good for attracting like bad things in your system, like metals and things that are reactive. Like, so a lot of dogs have, people still get it. Uh, vaccines for their dogs and the such so and when they get the vaccines it's a good thing to do like four days before five days later three weeks later because it affects how their blood work up works and so looking at what's on the blood work usually is my determination but I always give I've for my dog for 14 years every month I have given him like five, well, usually five three days before the day of a dose uh, breakfast lunch and dinner and then five days after just a dose and then he's good to go but i've been working he was um he had a, a big exposure to mosquito repellent down in florida at a rest stop and he had that same thing that you were just talking about you know so i think that you know the the toxicity from the pesticide um really affected he was he was a nutcase i just like wow you know and i didn't know i thought i was going to lose him I started, I had Thulia with me, and I started giving him five pellets every hour. Because you can't overdose on homeopathic medica medication. I used to give my daughter homeopathic teething tablets, the only thing that worked when she was teething. Oh, yeah, really? Awesome. Mm -hmm. I mean, Tylenol, meh, kind of helped a little bit for a little bit of time. And then the stuff that you're supposed to rub on their gums, eh, that, that worked for five minutes until, you know, you get enough saliva that it washes it away. So that, that would have been helpful to know about that stuff back in October. Mm -hmm. we, where we used to live, he could jump the fence and run around in the open space, and part of it is farmland. And generally the toxic crap that's out there to get rid of the ground squirrels, which are terrible, mm -hmm. is um, an anticoagulant. So I knew he hadn't had that because we'd experienced the oldest dog picked up a dead squirrel and its abdomen was split open and it had all this blue gel in it. And so we knew mm -hmm. that it had been poisoned. So we gave the dog vitamin K. Mm -hmm. he, he wasn't, he, he didn't eat it. He was just carrying it. So the, the, um, remedy for, you know, like too, too thin a blood is vitamin K. 
So the dog took vitamin K for about a week to 10 days. And I watched him. I saw every time the dog burped or hiccuped or looked at me funny, it was like, you okay? <laughs> so I know you have, you do that. Like, it's just like, you can just look at it. It's like, okay, look into, deep into their eyes. They're so soulful, right? Yes. And you're going like, talk to me, <laughs> you know, and I they do. I don't have that problem. This one fault. Well, the old one is literally laying at my feet. Now he has nerve arthritis in his back legs. Do you have a homeopathic mm -hmm. help hack for that? Because it's getting kind of bad. I'd have to know a little bit more about okay. his health history. We can talk about that, you know, later and maybe doing some, you know, I always say to people that ice is your friend. Hmm. You know, and the only time you never use ice, I was like, my, my, I always tell people, use ice first. I don't care what somebody else tells you. Use ice first. If it makes it worse, then don't use it. But always use ice first. You know, and then, you know, and then being, because most of the accidents when I had my practice, um, my full practice, um, were from uh, dehydration problems. That's, and also, you know, you're going to, now you're going to want to drink lemon juice because when you put lemon in water, it helps you with mineralization of the foods that you're eating. So you have better results with that. So that might motivate you a little bit too. I will try it again, but ugh, when they throw a lemon in the, well, okay. I haven't put lemon in my water, but like tap water around here or the quote unquote purified water you get in restaurants that tastes chlorinated and then they throw a lemon in it. It's like, bleh, no, yuck. Well, you have to also, that's a good thing not to do when you're out in public anyway, because usually you've got somebody who's cutting them, you know, and the question is, do they have gloves on? Where were your hands at before that? It's the same thing when you go into a bar and have a drink or, and meet your friends. Let's say you do that, you know, or a restaurant, you know, um, even if you have like soda water or whatever, and that, and you see the, the handfuls of peanuts, right? But the, the, you just like, whose hand was in there to begin with? You know, it's just like, I never, ever have eaten stuff out of there unless I, I go, show me the bag and show me the clean bowl. You know, first before I eat it, I'm very, very funny about that. I think more people are going to be like that after this virus scare, maybe is the right word, is over. I've, I read an article recently that they think, the restaurant industry may actually have to change because people will not go back a hundred percent the way we were a month ago. You know, just going in a restaurant and just eating whatever. I don't know about that one, but maybe. I maybe I, but it, it would be, you know, like if the if they get restricted about how many people they can actually have in a restaurant at a given time. You know, I think things will go back to where how they were before, except for I think we're going to be um, censored a lot more. Mm. You know, it's just like when people have vaccinations, you know, you really have to ask whether or not there's a microchip in it. Um, and I'm, I'm serious. The, well, I laugh because um, I'm like, they don't they didn't have small enough microchips when I was getting vaccinated. I don't know about my daughter. She's 28. But nowadays, yeah, actually, I never thought about that. Man, I'm so glad I don't have young kids. <laughs> <laughs> I know, you know, that, that, that's a concern, you know. And I have a concern about um, the safety of 5G. You know, mm -hmm. I've, re I've been reading, um, I mean, what is published for the general public is not necessarily what's really going on on a higher level. So you have to like you have to do research. You got to be willing to look. You got to go into PubMed. You got to go uh, have a friend who's a researcher who gets into those special panels that can like put a word in, and you see every article, every journal that's ever existed, and if there is anything about it, because we don't as and normally if you went and just did a search for like the Journal of Virology, you're not going to get the articles that you see that you know that. And from around the world, too, because you have so many scientific communities that contribute to it. And when somebody sends something, you can read the abstract, you know, but you don't always have access to the full article. You know, so that's, you know, and that's something to consider. So I think 5G, it's, you know, I, 
you know, my sister said, you should get this new telephone. I said, I don't think so. I'm going to keep my telephone or I'll find another telephone that's 4G. I'm not going to get another telephone and amp that up. You know, and also having it not even in another health hack is when you sleep. You know, there's uh, David Asprey um, wrote a book called uh, Superhuman, and this is his last book that he wrote. But he talks about having, I don't have them on right now, and I don't have them near me, or else I would um, show you um, glasses that block out the light from a computer so it doesn't stress your body, your immune system, and it doesn't weaken your brain. And then he has those, he has day ones and night ones. And I found the same similar ones on an Amazon um, purchase. And so in the, in the daytime or if I'm driving, I will wear the yellow ones. And at nighttime I wear ones that have more of a red tint to them. And I'm not tired. I don't have that stress. You know, sometimes after you do something, mm -hmm. I've got to look up one more thing before I go to bed. And then you're laying there <laughs> thinking, I got to go to sleep. I can't go to sleep because it turned on your limbic system in your brain. And it's making you think that it's daytime again. So it's just, you know, that little health hack of something like that is really helpful. Um, yeah, I, I and, kind of, I do. I make sure that all the electronics don't, they're all closed. Um, the phone is face down on the nightstand so that if it lights up for whatever reason, it doesn't light up the room. Yeah. And my, my, the way you like to listen to, I forget the term, the beats. Binaural beats. Binaural, there we go. I knew it started with a B, but that was, that was as far as I was getting. Um, I learned several years ago, I, if I fall asleep in front of the TV and then get up, wash face, brush teeth, da -da -da, do all that stuff, and get in bed, then I'm awake. And so I try very hard not to fall asleep in front of the TV. And one day I realized it, like... I'm like, I'm really into this show. Why the hell did I fall asleep? It's the rhythmic tone of people mm -hmm. speaking. So I actually listen to podcasts, not usually true crime. Don't do that to my brain while I'm sleeping. I swear, <laughs> I, like just last night, I put on a podcast and then, you know, I wake up in the morning, I'm like, did I even hear any of that? And so I scroll all the way back. I'm like, I got in three minutes. Whereas if I'm not listening, you know, music doesn't do it. I haven't tried beats. Maybe I'll try that. But it's the rhythmic tone of voices. Mm -hmm. And there's one, one independent podcast that I really like. The guy is hysterical. And, you know, he just talks about random stuff. And, and he's got a nice voice. And it's just like, I feel like I sometimes I'm like, oh, I'm going to listen to this one. Sorry. <laughs> Feel really mm -hmm. bad, but you really help me go to sleep, dude. <laughs> it's yeah, the you know, the thing, but I make sure you, my if, phone is face down so uh -huh. that you know, and it's on um, silent so that you know there's no notifications or anything popping up. And the room is dark, dark. When we first moved to this house that we're in now, there weren't blinds on the windows, and oh my god, I was waking up. I'd had, I'd wake up, I'd eat breakfast, and I was exhausted because it wasn't dark enough to sleep soundly as soon as we got the blinds up and they're closed at night and it's black in there no problem sleeping yeah i have to have i have to be in a room that with so the glasses the night glasses and the glass and those glasses i'm talking about would be very good for you um and, and they would be helpful also he says never keep your telephone next on the nightstand next to you because it's emitting electromagnetic energy you know and um, you know, but I have, you know, it's just like if my telephone is across the room, um, you know, and cause I plugged it in, you know, for doing that, but it will go so how YouTube does is they just go into like the next, the place, the next version. And if it's something very different, I'm thinking like, Oh my God, what's that? And it wakes me up. So it defeats the purpose. So I stopped doing that. And I just like only have it so that, uh, it's on do not disturb. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then I put it on the floor. The floor might work. But you know, it's pretty so, tall. It's, so it's it's a little bit farther away from I do me. worry a little bit about all the Bluetooth stuff, but I'm like, well, mm -hmm. something's gonna get you anyway, but as long as you know I'd like to minimize the something's gonna get you part. <laughs> I feel like I've done that yeah. really well in the last Yeah, 12, yeah, you look great. Ten, you look great. Thank you've you. got really you know, it's just like you've got a very bright face and you know grit. Well, I do have a light. <laughs> <laughs> well, what you do, you know, so it's just like, that's a, you know, just say thank you. Um, <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's so, I think that, you know, people, 
need to have a, you know, like crap's hitting the fan. You got to go back, you know, and you've got to take a look at what's your basic, what's your baseline. Fix what's not working, you know, or look to fix. What do I have to do to fix that? What's not working, and then amp up your health so you can excel mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, and socially. You know, and a good place to start that. I, you know, it's just like I can't say. Um, you know, the the other day when I was talking to somebody about why are you sick, fat, and tired, um, you know, they said to me that they weren't sick, fat, or tired. And I said, again, I've always said, well, and I said, you know when you're fat, you know when you're tired, but you don't always know when you're sick. And you've got to know, you have to have something to start with, you know, and it's a good place and be able to go back to, and that you can use again and again and again. It's not going to go out of fashion. Health is, doesn't go out of fashion. That's so, true. you know, we have... You know, and I'm always open to like when someone gives me a health hack, I try it. You know, yeah, before I tell somebody to do it, I try because I'm thinking like, okay, so you know, they go, it worked. It's just like so it has to work for me before I repeat it. You know, and that. But some, I've heard so many things, and I'm collecting health hacks from people. Uh, what's your favorite health hack? Um, and so I've been getting some pretty interesting answers from people, and, and having those um, categorized. That's good. Awesome. And your book is available on Amazon? Um, my book is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble. It's on, you know, a lot of other book um, uh, websites, Websites, you know, that are that I never knew existed until about a month and a half ago. <laughs> but, the, um, you know, but there, uh, there's uh, internet book sites that, you know, that posture your book to be good to go out. But it is on Amazon. It is on, um, you know, Barnes & Noble. Um, but you, all the reviews, most of the reviews are on, it's the best, was the best seller, um, in multiple categories, countries and hottest release and three categories. I was so psyched, uh, when I got that, I was just like, really countries? And, you know, but I know a lot of people who are supportive around the world who have, were supporting me in, in that endeavor. Um, but it's available there and you can read the reviews. The reviews are very, you know, like they're people who read the book participated in the book they're there um and if anyone's got a question they can reach out to me i'm on healthteamnetwork.com uh there's also a, a way in the book and uh, it shows you other ways to get a hold of me i offer for someone who buys the book and goes through it a complimentary 30 minute uh time with me they can not have to go to me they can go to somebody else who also is a functional medicine doctor or is a lifestyle medicine doctor who can read that chart because there's a chart in there because it's a book of questions, um, basically some in introductory part of questions, and you take the answers to the questions and you plot them on a chart called the health status chart. And then you can take that chart and you can advocate for yourself. And you can go to somebody, you can have a discussion, a real discussion about what's going on and what your solutions are. So that's, that's my gift. That's, you know... So I wanted to make sure it's like after you give somebody that knowledge, I don't want people to get overwhelmed and go like, Oh my God, what do I do now? Yeah. You know, so I want to be, so I want to be available so I can give like, okay, so where are you at? This is what I would do, you know, and I would never tell anybody to do something I wouldn't do myself. It just doesn't happen. And well, the Amazon happen. link and the link to your website where people can get a hold of you are in the show notes. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate this chat today. I do too. It's been so much fun. I really loved it. This is really a good, but it was a lot of fun. Good. Thank you. Fading Memories is also available wherever you get your favorite podcasts.